is it okay if I ask something related to relationships? Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. Um, I don't know. Uh, you, I was in, a, in 2015. I was in Miracle Bible College uh, in Miracle Center, and uh, we had a class we called the counseling class where we studied about temperaments. I want to get your view. Um, you know about the choleric, the sanguine, the uh, melancholic, phlegmatic, and uh, I think those are ones. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, being the fact that. We all have different temperaments, and that how that one also determines how we respond and how we interact, and you know, how we, you know, we, we live with people around us. And uh, some of us are like choleric, and a bit hard. It, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the temperament of the hard people, the, you know, the aggressive people, the, the tough people. And uh, there was, you know, uh, now I'm coming to the point I want to say about about if you say finding someone in life you're going to live with. I don't know how, what your view is. Um, we were taught that you know, if you had a certain type of temperament, it is good if you to balance it with somebody with a, of a different type of temperament. Uh, so that you know, as we learn and understand how Christ does, we are able to uh, handle the negative side because each temperament has a negative side and a positive side. So it helps us to balance as we, we study how Christ lived this life. So um, in your in your in your view, do you think somebody? Will, with people with the same temperament, can they, uh, you know, relate and, and be successful? Any of you? I don't know if you understand okay. what I'm saying. Um, my view is this: we as human, we don't know who is the best spouse for us. I mean, sometimes you say someone totally different, a little different, very similar. Is it? Which one is better? Which one is not good? We never know. You know, someone totally different from you, that can be difficult. Partly different from you, we don't know whether it's best or not. And I think God is the best chooser. And God is the best planner. Psalm 139, verse 16 to 17. I hope you remember this verse, that all the days of my life, before one of them came to be, was already written in your book. O oh Lord, your, your, um, your, uh, your, your mind for me is so good, so wonderful. I, I, because I pull from the Chinese verse. Now, what I want to say is, the plan of God is already in heaven. But we don't enter the plan automatically. Romans 12, 1 to 2, it says that. When we dedicate our body as a living sacrifice, and then do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of the mind. And then we can discern the perfect, good, and pleasing will of God. So, the will of God doesn't come true automatically. Many Christians, they say, after believing in Jesus, how come my life is full of problems and fights and all kinds of problems? Because they don't let Jesus be the Lord. Then God cannot walk in their life. And people have this concept. If I want a marriage, I want to have romance first. Romance, I, oh, this one looks good. I feel good. I like it. And then, oh, everything feels good. Okay, this is the right person. Is romance the best guidance? I think romance is very unreliable because romance is, I mean, we're cheated by the eyes. You know, the beautiful one, the handsome one, the tall one, we attract our eyes. I, I suggest to Christians, let God guide us and do not rush it. I know this in this country it may be difficult. That that I know that the uh, the culture around is you know. I, I I hope you don't mind because I check with Washington about you know the uh, culture here, and I heard about these parties and people dance, loud music, and then I heard that um, people have sex freely, and. Many people don't have the concept of virginity and don't have the concept of having sex is, having, is being united with a person. And so people are guided by sex, by, you know, the man is guided by sex, the woman is guided by the hunger to get someone to really love her. And I think all this will lead to a lot of problems in marriage. But if we honor God and say, Lord, you have a plan, 
I just let you guide me. I will tell you. When you just love people, you care about people, the right person will come up. But if the person come up, you ask God to guide you to, to find out. Now let me tell you my experience. In 2008, my first wife passed away. At that time, I totally want to just do mission work. Because I just said, it's too much to handle my wife and to think about her feelings and then she's not willing to go with me and, and then uh, her feelings from time to time, her emotions and if I go by myself and I pray, I can pray all day long, I can do my ministry all day long. So I, I thought I would just stay single. I totally want to stay single. I just thought, you know, I would just take a luggage and then go from one place to another and I can be free. But in the process, God showed me that's not His plan. I did not choose. He just brought someone to me. I did not chase after her, and she did not chase after me. God just moved it in our hearts. But I did not take it right away. I asked for God, for God's guidance. For 11 months, I asked for 11 months. <laughs> now, actually, I wait until I have, you know, I'm fully confident that this is the one. And God showed different ways that she's the right person. And after marriage, I found that she's really the right person. Really, really the right person. Because, you know, I, I thank God that, I thank God again. He has given me many teachings. Most people say, wow, you, everything we ask, you can answer so well. And you can have a, a good concept of many different teachings. But she can tell me how I can do better. Not many people can do that. She can tell me how I can do better, how I can respond to people. She really has a lot of wisdom. And, and, and also after we got married, I noticed that when I went to the country I went most, I don't want to name that country, I noticed that when I went there, every time I come back, I might have rash on my body because the food there is not clean. So I know that now it's best for me not to stay in that country. It's best to stay in Hong Kong. It's better for my health. And then I can go there. So what I'm saying is, God is watching over you. He has a plan for you. Don't rush. If you rush, you might get the wrong person and you regret for the rest of your life. But if you follow God, you just obey God. God shows different ways, you know, to let me know. Actually, I asked God this. I said, God, if it is your will, please accomplish it. If it's not your will, please stop it with your almighty power. I said, no, no. That. stop it with your almighty power. Yes. <laughs> because if it's not God's will, if I get into it, I get into more trouble. Yeah. It will stop my ministry. Because now I can go freely to different countries. You know, imagine I have a troublesome wife. And then... And when I go to different places, she's bothering me, giving me trouble, I'll be suffering. Yeah. But now, <laughs> we, we communicate every day with joy and fun every day, with encouragement yes. and wisdom. It's totally different. It, I have so much support from her, so much encouragement and wisdom, and she get a lot of support and love from me too, we both. And so I really, enjoy it totally and I, I just want to say that that let God guide you so I, I suggest for Christians first to let God guide you and then when you feel that someone might be a person tell the pastor to pray for you and to counsel see if that person is right for you because the pastor has more wisdom than we and then and then uh, to discern and then pray together and not to date in that period. Not to pursue romance in that period. <laughs> and just to seek, you know, God's guidance. And, and also, after dating, don't have sex. <laughs> don't have so much body contact that you are excited sexually. If you are excited sexually in the dating process, it's already sinning. That's my view, and I think that it's biblical. That if we, you know, every time you date, you you're sexually aroused, and then you just stop yourself, barely able to stop yourself from committing adultery. That is not the Christian way. You know, many Christians like this. You know, uh, on the weekdays they're dating, you know, and then they commit adultery, and then on Sunday they repent, and on Monday they sin again. 
every week like that, they will be very weak. And they've given Satan many footholds into their life. They won't be able to enter the perfect plan of God. I will uh, also say something concerning this. Just like uh, Pastor said, when it comes, this issue of temperaments is real. Oh, I didn't answer that, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's real, but now above it is God. And his word, because the one thing that uh, the man that wrote a book concerning temperaments, he was a Christian. But one of the concepts that he brought out was when you are born again and you are spirit led, you can defy the negative sides of different temperaments. So now God is the one that knows, you know, someone might be the same temperament with you, but the person has been transformed by God and formed in a way that you can walk together. Many years ago, I, uh, we had gone to do mission. Uh, by that time, I was ministering uh, in a church in Mark in the area. We went to do mission with one sister. She's still a friend of mine up to now. She lives in the UK. But when we went to do mission, I think what happened there was this that we call, in the worldly setting, is called crushing. Because I always knew her, she was part of my prayer team, I was the prayer leader. Um, but that day, a thought just came out of the blue in my mind. Huh? Me, her, you know? So when I, when a thought came in my mind, I prayed. Lord, is it, is it you? Is it? Then I slept. It wasn't even that serious. When we slept at night, I saw her coming, walking towards me. But she was limping. She was lame. In the actual sense, in the natural realm, she's not lame, she's perfect. But in the dream, she was lame. So when I woke up, immediately I knew this is not a deal. I mean, God is not in this thing. I cannot, this is not it. Little did I know that a few months from that time, she was even gonna travel out of the country and stay uh, abroad for a long time. By the time she returned, I was already married, and we had our first son. I, I went, I went to her wedding, but when I saw her on her wedding, even the way she looks, I knew she was not the one. You know, and thank God I was ready. <laughs> you know, so it's good to follow the leading of the Lord. Right. Now I, uh, I would answer the temperament. Um, for the, each temperament, people can work on it and improve. Now, I. I, I know what the system you talk about. Uh, I, uh, I'm more familiar with the Enneagram. Is it called the Nine Personalities? Mm -hmm. And then the ideas of the Enneagram is that each person can have all the nine qualities and then we try to improve on each one of them. So as Christians, we can be aware how we are and we can be aware of how people are and then we can build up ourselves. And then, But as to how to work together, that is something you know, I, I believe too, also, we, we don't just work <clears throat> with the spiritual. We also work with the mind, because God gives us the mind, the mind to discern. Like, for instance, a pastor um, with certain personality and, a, and then the co-worker of certain personality, how can they work together better? That's something we can learn and discern, and both persons can improve to make it more workable. So, so it's something helpful. But not all of them are helpful. So you have to discern which one is helpful. So I, I just want to say that. And then for marriage, it's not necessarily that you're totally different. Now with me and my wife, we have similarities, similarities, but we also have differences. So it, it's God who can say who is the best. I just want to say that.